Good evening, friends. Barb Pask here again to paint for you. I'm working on an 8x10 um, Centurion oil prime linen panel. Um, I also, let me show you an image that got me excited recently. This is an artist that I've followed for a while, Jennifer McChristian. There's her name. Check her out if you're not familiar with her. She's uh, pretty big stuff. She recently was on the cover of Plein Air magazine. Um, I like her work. She's very painterly. And one thing I've noticed, she very frequently tones with the kind of a pink color. Um, this is one of hers. This is on Instagram. Obviously a plein air piece of a cemetery. And if you look, you can see, you know, pink here and there. I really like that. Um, I don't tone all the time. You, you know if you watch me a lot of times I'll do an orange color, which is nice too. But uh, here's a little video where you can see her pink tone. So you're covering it up. But she leaves a lot of it showing through, which is kind of exciting, I think. Kind of, I don't know, I want to say her trademark, but I see her use a pink a lot. And I think it's kind of a pink and um, maybe a rose and Indian yellow that she mixes together, I think I heard her say. But anyway, I saw this painting of the cemetery and I just thought it was exciting. I uh, went over today actually and painted on location and painted in the local cemetery. And I did a pink tone and uh, it's not done. I need to, to go back to it and uh, put some cleaner color um, to. There's a lot of pink showing through on mine yet. But I, I just found this really exciting. So anyway, today I, I shot some photos before I left and uh, I've got one I'm going to show you that I really like that I took today. I like the pine tree. I like these particular stones. I'm not going to paint my car in it. <laughs> Back in there. There's some pine trees in the background too. So it's a vertical and uh, I like it. So I may have to get my stand. I don't think I can put this on here without blocking my painting. Wait a minute, let's try this. We'll push it over. Maybe that'll work. Hopefully that'll hold that good enough. Let's see if we can tighten it down any. Can you hopefully you can see okay too. I think that's not bad. So I'm going to hopefully I don't regret it. I'm going to tone this in a pink color to start. I have a tube of, I bought a lot of different Cobra colors over the years, trying things. They don't make an alizarin crimson, so um, this is one of the ones I think I, let's see, is that the one? No, some of these end up being kind of a pink color and uh, anyway, we're going to use some of that and some Indian yellow. So we get something a little peachy pink, maybe along the lines of what she used. And we're going to tone with that. That does not look like I want it to. So anyway, it was a beautiful day here and I enjoyed being over there. Um, nobody bothers you in the cemetery, as you can imagine. She might have said permanent rose in Indian yellow. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's better. Let's try that. So I'm just going to take a brush and we're going to put a little water on it and we're going to get a tone on this canvas. And it would, might do you well to even do this early and let it dry or do it in acrylics. That's one thing, you know, you do run into. You, you get into it when you paint and it does, you know, of course it's going to mix with your color that you're putting on top. So I'm not going to do it real heavy. 
but my goal will be to leave it poking through here and there too. So it was my first time out this year and uh, you know I had to stop and think if I had everything I needed, kind of a test run. If you've never painted out, it uh, can be a wonderful experience. It can be terrible too, but uh, today was nice. It wasn't too, too terribly windy and uh, it was actually I had a wasp chasing me around, so they're back. This is the year of the 17-year locust where I live. So they'll be out before too long and that's really, I don't know what that's going to do to our year. I hate them big things. We may not want to camp much, we may not want to paint out much, I don't know. They don't hurt you, but they're just creepy. <laughs> they land on you. I remember when they were out years ago, you know, you walk in the house and there's one sitting on your shoulder. And I scream, you know, and I just don't like them. Big red eyes, they're just creepy. All right, so let's wipe this down so we get, uh, you know, any excess water out of it. But again, I like the I like the stones that's in this one, and I like the pine trees. Um, there are some little American flags in there, which is always a nice touch. When I was talking last video about, um, I was reading some questions from uh, Monica was her name, and she was asking what type of painter I considered myself. I couldn't come up with a representational. I'm a representational painter. You know, uh, I lean toward Impressionism, but um, I try to paint what I see, represent what I see, you know. Um, I'm trying to paint fine art. I try to follow a lot of basic rules that I think a lot of people do. I try to paint like people's work that I like. I mean, not copy them, but in their style. And your style finds you, you know, if you paint it will find you and people will recognize your work after a while and uh, but I just have some basic things I always think about um, but there, just do your homework if you're new to it there are a lot of things good books out there um, when you're painting fine art you're supposed to paint like your eye sees so you decide where your focal point is and that's usually your most defined colorful area and everything that recedes away from that should get softer. That's how your eye sees. If you paint everything hard-edged and detailed and bright and important, your eye just jumps all over the canvas. So decide where you want the eye to go. I mean, I, I've said that over and over, but when you learn the basics things, then you start thinking a whole lot more about design. And there is, there's a lot to it. Okay, I'm just gonna take a dark color and try to place some things on here. Um, I don't want to divide the canvas in half, so I want to keep that. There's like a um, roadway that kind of goes across. That pine tree is not halfway, which is good. It's And if it was, I'd move it. It's my world. Or you crop the photo so things are where you want them to be. We'll just kind of sketch on with this darker color and there's a lot of tree trunk. The limbs are way up here and way back in here in the distance is a, a shorter pine and then there's another pine tree actually right in this area. You know it's a lot of uh, Everything is not leafed out now, not that it matters, but there's a tree line back in there. And in the very distance, of course, there's, you know, some more stones back on the other side of the roadway. All right, so we've got one, kind of thinking about the placement of these guys. There's three large ones. One thing I like, too, is um, in addition to these large ones, here let me show you, 
there's a row of perfectly lined, see the smaller ones back there, boom, boom, four in a row. I liked, I liked that too. As soon as I took this, I just thought I, I like that. So we'll, you know, we'll sketch them in, not perfect. I kind of tend to create them with paint as I go. But anyway, check out uh, Jennifer. I, I like her work. I always have. And uh, she had a nocturne. I should show you that. Really sweet. I did a few of those for a while on here. That's always fun. That's just kind of a pointed one. The ones that I like are these other two. After I painted today, I I just I walked around the cemetery to try to get a walk in, and it's a great place to walk to. My mother and father are buried there, and my grandmother. I've mentioned Richard Smith before, great painter, um, still living, but he um, he's done some paintings in cemeteries. Just beautiful works. And this will be fun to do. The top of it has like a little arch, and then there's like a, hmm, I'm not even sure what that is, like an urn thing on the top. This is not a one of those cemeteries with a whole lot of uh, statues and stuff, you know, uh, figures. I actually went over there today with that in mind, and I did find a couple. That is what I ended up doing. But and then we got these four standing there. Kind of look at where the bottom of this. This goes away, so that goes uphill. And this one down here. And these are mostly gray, typical of headstones. Okay, if this height is here. This one should finish off about down in there someplace. This one has a little urn thing on top of it. And almost like a rooftop little pointy top on it. You know, I don't need a lot of information to get started. Some little short ones across here. Anyway, then we're going to put this flag in that we see here, and then there's another flag there. As we look past these four stones, there's another one. There's a tall one there, which we may, I mean, it's going to be our design, so we may or may not want all of everything we see. And across the way, of course, there. All right, we'll go with that. I think what I'm going to do is mix up uh, some values of gray, because again, the stones are gray. And I usually do a gray with all three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And then I look at it and decide whether it needs to go be warmer or cooler. 
but we're going to need uh, there's some areas that are pretty dark so we'll make the we'll make up a dark pile first with those three primaries and then we'll pull some of that away there's going to be some very light areas of course where we're catching sunlight which will help explain you know And actually, there are some areas that we may add a little more transparent red oxide to that look a little very nice and warm. So anyway, I'm doing what I do often, which is to mix up um, three values. It's just a good way to start. I've said this before, and if you, uh, you can intermix those three values back and forth. But again, if you're new to painting, consider just the limited palette for quite a while. Makes your life easier, just fewer decisions. All right, we'll just, no particular reason, I think, but we'll just start with the guy closest to us. Normally what I would do, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm doing the focal points first. Usually I would start with the background and work myself forward with the landscape, but uh, we're not exactly doing that, so I never do everything the same. Putting in the darkest darks that I see. And as you can see, I didn't do a very good job drawing them because I'm just not real worried about it. They was mowing when I got there, so I that dictated a little bit what I painted today because I was trying to stay off the grass because I've had that happen. That's the risk you take when you go out to paint in a public place that they're going to run you off. But I would have been okay anyway, you know, if he ended up quitting. But you never know. You don't want to get going and then be forced to move. But if I was painting a figure, I would probably start with a figure. So that's kind of my thought process here. I'm starting with my, my focal point. This value is a little lighter, but still dark because it's away from the light. If you like painting the figure, I mean, cemetery is a good place to go, you know, with all the if you, especially if you go to a really old cemetery with wonderful old figures and stuff. Okay, let me think what I'm doing here. Again, I'm kind of building these as we go.
Okay, I'm probably going to move these one. Now lighter yet, and then we'll explain this stuff later on with highlights is my plan. I have some amazing headstones now with photos of people. Beautiful, gosh. You know, and if you don't exactly nail the shape of them, who would know? You know, who would know? And like always, I'm using a pretty large brush. And we can tighten up and clean up this stuff when we paint around them. So. And I can come back, you know, with a darker value and uh, See what I did there? Explain that peak. Yeah, the little thing on the top is uh, warmer. A little urn shape. With a light top. We'll see how well we do. I mean, like I said, find her on uh, Instagram. She's even got a little uh, quick demo on there where she's painting like cars in traffic, and uh, you can watch that. And I see bits of the pink, which I want to see some of the pink. I mean, that's the idea behind this, right? And again, if you would do acrylic, you wouldn't muddy it up, muddy up your colors like, you know, we're going to fight with that, so. Hope everybody had a nice Easter. We, uh, I get to see some family members I hadn't been with hardly at all this year, so very nice. And bring some of that color up there. I like that better.
And if you intermix these piles, these three values, like I say, you can come up with something in between too. So this may not be a subject you have any interest in, but it's like everything, you know, it's, it's a challenge, the pain, and uh, I painted there other times and uh, they have some really cute little buildings in the back that I have painted. I enjoyed that too. A lot of times cemeteries have gorgeous old trees too, if that's your interest, you know. You don't have to paint stones. Kind of building our guy up as we go. Let me zoom in here on him. Just a great big thing up here. It's like a, I guess it's an urn shape. With like a finial on top. But you know, it's never once and done, so we'll be visiting this stuff again, you know. All right, let's move over to this guy. Kind of a, just a pointy top, kind of a... Again, that angle goes away, so it would be like that when we're done. You know, these come, this coming this way, so keep that in mind.
you know, I know we'll have to come back. Like there's a very light edge on these. We'll probably have to hit them with a liner brush, but we'll kind of place them there for now. Let's go ahead and mix up a nice green and block in that pine tree. I think we'll kind of, let me see, I don't want to get this right on top. So there's like above these is like a roadway and then the pine tree starts back there a little bit. So. You know, I don't want them to attach to a stone. You got to be careful of that. And this pine tree, okay, if we set our roadway is somewhere in there, this is a smaller one and he has shorter. He's back further, obviously. And the roadway about there. And another one about in here. And I wanted to mirror that one, so we'll go maybe a little. Actually, some of the, this this evergreen is really big, and uh, some of the limbs, let's see. If that's what I'm seeing or not here, wait a minute. No, it doesn't look quite balanced if I paint it. It almost looks like it's clear out there. And I am going to come back and put some nicer highlights on some of this stuff too and define this guy, the top of this, better too. All right, again, let's mix up a green. I want to stay pretty dark, so we'll go ultramarine blue and Indian yellow, which is a nice dark, rich green, transparent green actually. And I'm going to put a little crimson in it. I want to kill it a little bit. Yeah, some areas of it are pretty dark, so we'll go after those first. If I use a really light touch, I'm less likely to pull this pink up. Though I'm hoping I'm... No, it's pretty set on there now. See, we did it pretty thin. That's good. So I'm just blocking in these darks where I see them on this tree. Yeah, I could just, you know, just paint the tree, and I've done it that way before. Yeah, I want to uh, make the top of this more interesting. We will. I'm going to put a little um, yellow in this now.
I went to, I'll show you a trick here on some of the foliage on these pine trees in a minute. Um, something I saw Mark Boges do when I was at his workshop. Not a trick, a technique. Sometimes you go to a workshop and you pick up one thing and think, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, a lot of them are not what you would hope. I've done a lot of workshops. But sometimes you get one really good technique and think, okay, well, maybe that was worth it, huh? It's tall and it runs off. We want to make sure it feels like it runs off the page. We'll be introducing some sky holes in here and stuff. Oh, I was going to show you one thing Mark did. Let me show you here. like he would lay in um, a row of paint like that for the pine tree and then he would pull it up like that to create you know the branch Kind of looking at the shape of the sky holes and uh, where I'm going to place those. Okay, and the two little pine trees that set back a little bit further, I think I'm going to uh, cool this mixture off a little bit. Maybe, maybe lighten it a little bit. I want them to look like they're back there further. You know, it's all a guess as to how it will work, but uh, Actually, there's kind of a, as I mentioned, kind of a tree line back in there. Might be getting ahead of ourselves. Maybe we'll kind of, maybe we'll kind of uh, scrub that in first and uh, come back and clean up those pine trees later. Maybe we can add, you know, tree trunks and. And usually I would work back to front and I would, you know, top to bottom back to front, but uh, like I said, I went after my focal point first.
Let's mix up some sky color. I'm going to clean up this brush for the first time. And we're going to mix up some, uh, we'll try some cobalt and white and see what that looks like. The one I did today, like I said, I'm going to have to go back to, um, I was, well, this seems fairly dry surprisingly, but I was picking up the pink and I did not get the nice clean sky color that I would like, so no big deal. I'm going to, rarely are they done anyway when you walk away with them. So we'll just mix some cobalt and white. Let's try that. And I'm not over mixing it. I've got and I'm hitting some of these sky holes and then we'll have to come back probably and we may pull some branches through them even. I don't know if you're familiar with Roger Bansamir. I took a workshop from him one time, but he, uh, he has a show on PBS. I don't know if it's where you live, but uh, he mostly, he does beautiful oil work, but he mostly paints in acrylic. But boy, he does some good sky holes. Yeah, when I went to the workshop, you know, some of these people are like celebrities too, you know, and I wanted to meet him. And but then he demoed all in acrylic. I wish he'd done some oil. Now I know these look like dot dot dots, but we're going to come back and we'll go over them and maybe more foliage, maybe more um, branches. Keep it a little darker up here and we'll get a little lighter toward the horizon. Typically it is a little lighter and sometimes warmer. I've seen people do skies out of some amazing colors that really work. And this may not work. We're going to try it. I want to be careful, you know, not to cover up all this pink. That's why we put it in there. That's probably not going to be a problem today when I did it. Like I said, really the challenge was uh, I, le I left too much pink. Yeah, look at that. It was on the edge there. I picked it up. Can you tell how purple that is? That was some of that pink color. Wow. This is too dark. But try not to, you know, make stuff up, especially until you got a lot of experience and you've painted for a while. And because uh, usually when you make stuff up, it looks like you made stuff up. You know, when you make up trees and.
take our liner brush and uh, I want to see this trunk like I can in the picture in different places. Alright, let's put those other uh, pine trees back in. You know, way back in here, we've got trees sticking up. Thank you. 
and like I said, and then there's like a roadway in, in the middle there, which is uh, I think it can be interesting. A painting is interesting. It's part of design. If you've got verticals and horizontals, that's like in a cityscape when you've got telephone poles sticking up. That can be really nice. And we're going to, again, we're going to highlight and uh, so we can make sure we see these details. Okay, is there any shadows in this? Let's see. Kind of a shadow on this side. How are we doing? About 54 minutes, that's not too bad. Yeah, the shadows seem to be going this way. As always, I never know how far we'll get, but uh, I do want to suggest, you know, some little stones over on that side of the road, too. So most of this is um, pretty lit, the rest of this grass, so... try to vary it with, uh, you know, different colors and values and stuff. Alright, we can look at the shape of these stones again too while we do this. And we'll have to clean this stuff up. It'd be challenging to cover up all this pink even if we wanted to. Which I, again, I we don't want to do that. I mean, why put it on here and then cover it up, so. And again, there's a few little flags and uh, actually there's daffodils. I mean, you could do whatever you wanted. You could put some flowers by the graves or um, plants, whatever. Let's try warming it up a little bit as it comes toward us. And um, there are some little, I don't know, they look odd though, some little nubs of stones <laughs> up in this area. I just want to, you know, break this up with some, see I put some transparent red oxide in there. We just don't want it with uh, so much green, we just don't want it all the same. And I could get my rubber knife out. You've seen me use that thing and lay this in. And then 
you can make it as textured as you want it or I'm always saying if you're painting oils you can show them off I went over those shadows a little bit that may or may not be a good thing we'll see You know, and with all this pink on here, you could leave the foreground pink, whatever you thought worked, you know. Or you could add texture in the foreground because it's coming closer to you, you know, whatever, whatever you like. I'm going to look back here a little bit better. Um, we've kind of lost this roadway across here. So we're going to put that back in. Now let's uh, let's look at these stones. Try to explain them better. Look at one at a time. We've got which I'm not sure I, I like that completely or not. Like this one kind of has a pink glow all around it. I think we'll come in a little closer. Got a lot of pink showing up in here, you know, maybe more than we want. I don't know. See all that. All right, let's zoom in on th this stone here. Let's look at it and see if we need darks or lights or what we need to explain it. And I think I'm going to go to a little brush. All right, we're going to... For the highlights, I'm going to take a little bit of water, water, yellow, where did that come from? Yellow and white, for the areas that I feel like I really want to, to show up. Like I said, like a little roof on it. Not that I have to paint it like I see it. I mean, it's whatever I want. A big old hunk. And again, the top is uh, an urn. Might mix up a little orange here. Now 
And again, I wouldn't have to describe these, but that's part of the reason I, I liked it, so. Paint on my computer, what's new, right? All right, we might move to the next guy now. You know, and it is not a replica of what's there, you know. Nor does it have to be, I don't think. Again, if it was a commission, if it was somebody's stone, you'd have to get it right, but... Uh. All right, let's go over to the next guy. This has a really unusual top on it. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with our darks and try to put those in there first. Yeah, it's really different, isn't it? Hard to even tell what you're looking at. These arch up here on both sides. And it comes up to the base. It's got a little finial of some kind up there.
I mean, I just think it's so interesting to walk around the cemetery. Some of the stones that people come up with, some of them look like trees, literally like trees. Face out a little bit. Oops. if I want all that. Okay, now I don't want this to get lost against that, so let me I'm thinking I may go more green back in here to separate the, you know, because I have a pretty gray back there. Which is in the distance and I want it to be kind of cool, but also want to make sure you my stone stands out so and that's one way to do it too you know hit the edge little rim light. You know, and uh, you know, it could be coming around that edge of it too, even though that's a darker side. All right, let's look at the other guy. Again, it's uh. Is kind of a pillar. I feel like they're standing out pretty good. All right, let's uh, think about these little stones here and little flags.
We really kind of lost one back in there, but that's okay. Actually, let me look at that. I think I need some more green back in there. So we've got a few of these American plagues stuck in the ground here. So I just kind of build the flag, you know, a little blue. Then get some red for your stripes. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Definitely not for this. This is little, a little bit of white. You could even take your palette knife, you know, and uh, make your steak. But it's uh, more about the color, you know. one over here. I might actually take my palette knife and you know put some real stripes on him. Again, it's more the color that catches people's eye, I think. And they've got little, you know, um, they're for people that was in the military, so they've got little a little circle on them, like a little plaque. So again, you can decide from here: do you want grass sticking up? Do you want flowers at the grave? Um, these don't have them. That doesn't mean you can't. Um, Looking up here at uh, thinking I want to make sure that I, you see the top of this. I'm kind of filling it in with color. Like I said, and uh, there, there are these little, t I just don't care for the way they look. I'll show you a little teeny tiny, these things, little tiny, tiny stones, um, you know, but across the way there's more stones, so 
we could suggest those, you know. See if we like that or not. Kind of suggesting some clouds. And then, you know, you could really uh, kick up a few areas of this grass if you wanted. May or may not work. We're going to try this. I mean, you know, it is sunlit. You know, the texture is good in the foreground, but back in here, I, I probably don't want it. So. Kick it back. I may leave it here. All right, so we're going to quit there. I'm going to think about, you know, again, there's stones across the, the area, and all we'd have to do, you know, is put a little bit of the gray color in back there to suggest the stones. Um, I just want to make sure the things that are important to me stand out, so if it means a few more highlights, we might do that. Heavier paint can help do that too. Alright, I'll get up and show you what I did. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, I keep saying it, but when I get up to a thousand subscribers, we're going to give away a painting. Cleaning up the shape of this a little bit. Actually, let me hit that with a little color. It's actually the whole little top of it's lit. But like that. Uh. Yeah, we'll have to decide. There, there, I see flat stones and I mean, you could just go crazy with it and add and add and add, you know. That's how a cemetery is. And I see a lot of pink, which that was part of our goal. Not perfect. I see some things. You know how it is. There's always things. But... All right, I will shut up and we'll show it to you. It's been about an hour and a half, which isn't bad. I mean, again, this is an eight by ten. Let me crank it down a little bit so you can see better. There we go. So I wanted those three stones to stand out. See, they've got like a rim light on them, so.
good and bad things. I like it pretty well. Like I said, I wanted that pink to show through, and uh, if you look, you do see it kind of all over. So uh, it was fun. Go to your cemetery and do a painting. It's a nice, quiet place to paint. All right. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to join me, and like and subscribe, and hit the uh, notification bell, and then it will tell you when I upload a new video. Thanks again for joining me. Catch you soon.